I'm very disappointed still, as I said two weeks ago, to see people trying to make hay out of this when the RCMP were doing their job. Alberta Premier Alison Redford exonerating the RCMP while they're being investigated by their own people for the gun, rab, gun grab and door smashing in High River during the flood. Uh, it's bizarre. One of the questions that we've been asking from the beginning of this is who gave the order? Alison Redford's always said it wasn't her. Jonathan Dennis, man standing behind her in that clip, always said it wasn't him. And then Doug Griffiths came along. He's the municipal affairs minister and made some shocking claims on camera. Immediately following that, I had an individual come up to me uh, behind the cameras afterwards and say there will be civil disobedience if you don't let us back in in 24 hours. And I said, people, you risk people's lives if we put people back in. And he said, trust me, we will storm the barricades, we will storm the RCMP, we will get into town if you don't take care of this in 24 hours. Well, I could see why the RCMP would be focused on public safety and be concerned about firearms and concerned about, especially when, you know, there was, there was an assault. Uh, so I targeted. I was in the other 29 communities. I never had one threat like that. All right. So is that the reason that the RCMP went into High River and nowhere else and started grabbing guns because one guy said there'll be civil disobedience if you don't let us in? Monty Salberg is a former federal cabinet minister, a principal at uh, New West Public Affairs, joins us now. Monty, uh, I'm scratching my head over this and wondering, is this an admission of guilt that maybe someone in the Redford government said, go in there and get the guns? Well, I don't know if I would uh, if I would say that. I, I would think that typically it would be a chain of command within the RCMP. But, you know, to me, this is just bizarre uh, rhetoric coming from from Doug Griffiths uh, to somehow justify the seizure of uh, guns from scores of homes in High River. People who had done nothing wrong, uh, but who had their their doors kicked in by the RCMP based on this allegation that one person said there was going to be civil disobedience it's really grasping at straws and i think it just makes the situation worse i don't know what he's thinking uh neither do i and if you remember back to the time immediately after the flood high river people were being kept out even from areas where you could access they had yeah. the military surround the town they had the rcmp surround the town and they put down uh the nail strips to make sure that you uh, you couldn't get in they were very aggressive with the townspeople. It's not surprising there might be some pushback. Well, yes, people were out of their homes for weeks upon weeks. And, uh, you know, they had, of course, they're worried about their property. They're worried about their pets. Uh, they're tired of uh, being kept out of their homes. They wanted to go back. The idea that, uh, you know, because some people got frustrated, it was somehow a justification for storming the barricades and knocking their doors in is bizarre. I... There is no way that any politician or, frankly, the RCMP can justify what they, what, what's well, gone on here. Who's this Doug Griffiths? What's his deal? Because I don't know him. Well, Doug Griffiths is uh, somebody who's viewed as an upward comer in the PC party. He ran for the leadership last time around, uh, did fairly well, is well-spoken, young, um, and uh, somebody who I think a lot of people saw as an up-and-comer in the PC party. He's from a rural riding and is regarded as being a bit more conservative than some of the rest of the uh, PC cabinet. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's really he's put some tarnish on that image uh, with his uh, performance uh, through what's occurred in High River. I know that they're not in the same party, but he's definitely annoyed Danielle Smith, who's the MLA for that area and the leader of the official opposition, the Wild Rose. Let's listen in on what Danielle had to say. The residents that I spoke with, they wanted to go back in to get their medication. They wanted to go back in to make sure that their cats were fed. They wanted to go back in to get their personal papers or to get their wedding dress because they had a wedding coming up. Or they wanted to get back in so they could start cleaning their houses. So the idea that the minister would say that that constitutes enough of a threat that he had to send the RCMP in to see people fire people firearms. I don't buy it. Monty, you've been around politics a long time, in government, out of government. Uh, when there's something as contentious as this, and the government keeps coming up with new reasons, that to me looks like amateur hour. They should be just saying, look, there's an investigation going on. We'll comment when we get the report, shouldn't they? Well, they really should. I mean, you know, he's really blaming, he's blaming the victims of a flood where people have lost almost everything they have, and now they're getting blamed. Uh, don't be surprised uh, if uh, there's a huge amount of blowback against Doug Griffiths and the, 
and the PC party because of this. Uh, a lot of people will say, excuse me, this is not, you know, this is not our fault. What was the government doing about this? Why were they standing idly by while this occurred? And I think, I think that's, I think all he's done is blow this up into a much bigger issue uh, than it was already. It was a big issue, but it was dying down somewhat. Now it's uh, be going to become inflamed again, and they have no one to blame but themselves for you know sticking foot firmly in mouth and blaming people who are the victims of the worst flood in Alberta's history. All right, Monty, great talking to you as always. We'll chat again soon. Yeah, thanks very much, Brian. All right, and remember what this is about, folks. It's about... Uh well, breaking and entering into people's properties, kicking down doors, search and seizure without warrant, seizure of private property without warrant. These are things that police officials should not be engaged in. Share your thoughts. Facebook.com, punch in my name or byline, you'll find us. Make sure you help spread the word. Share the stories. More to come.